Welcome back to this Construct 3 tutorial. In the last video, we wrapped up the mechanic for our swimming feature. I'm going to close up these groups just for now. And over on our layout tab, I'm going to rename the layer that we have. I'm going to call it player. So right now, everything we have on screen is on the player layer. I'm going to right click in the layers panel and add a layer to the top. And I'll call this collisions. And if I click on the ground object in our project panel, it'll bring up the properties. And over here by layer, we can drop that down and pick collisions. Now, every instance is on the collisions layer. And we can turn that on and off if we need to. Now I'm going to right click on the layers panel again and add a layer to bottom. And I'll call this water. I am going to click on our water object and come over here and move it to the water layer. Now something happens here, it disappears. And that is because the player layer, our default layer, is not transparent. And it has a background color of that gray. So if we click transparent, now we will have a black background and all the layers are transparent. So if we play that, we are up against a black background. I'm going to click and add another layer to the bottom and I'm gonna call this one background. So with the background layer selected, I'm going to double click on the layout, scroll down to tiled background, insert that, and then I'm going to resize this to 32 by 32. And then I'm gonna go into our grid, configure grid, and make sure that we have a grid width and height of 16. I'm going to turn snapping off, hit okay. So now we have four squares with our, our grid turned on. And for my first color, I am going to select our square tool, our rectangle tool, and I'm going to pick a black color. It's actually going to be a gray color. I'm gonna drop the hue and saturation down to zero and leave the luminance to, uh, I'm gonna go 10. And then with the square selected, I'm going to draw out a square just like that. And another one just like that. And then with the fill tool, we can fill those in. So with our paint bucket still selected, I'm going to bump up the luminance to, uh, let's try like 16. And that gives us a little bit lighter gray and I'm gonna fill in those two spots. Okay, we still have a dark background with this, but it's checkered and we can see it a little better. So up here in the corner, we have the corner of our layout. I'm going to, with our snapping turned on, I'm going to move it over uh, 16 pixels and up 16 pixels. And then I'm going to drag it to the bottom right and do the same thing. I wanna be 16 pixels and 16 pixels so that we cover the layout and nothing is left blank. And we can play that. And now we have a little background. Just gives us a little uh, visual representation. Definitely uh, not required for the project. All right, let's go ahead and lock that background layer. Now we can't move it. And now we're going to create our splash effect. Click on the water layer. Come over here to the layout and double click in that. And let's scroll down and get a new particle. Now I'm going to uh, just place this kind of wherever and I'm going to go into resize and I'm going to do three by three Very tiny. Okay. I want that blue color from our water and I don't have it saved in my swatches over here So I'm just going to fill this with a color for right now So that we can see it and then I'm going to go into our water object and get our eyedropper tool and sample that color now we can exit out of this and go back in to our particle. And now we have that color selected. Grab our paint bucket tool and fill that in. Okay, with that still selected, I'm gonna rename this uh, splash. So with our splash still 
selected, we can come over here to our properties panel, scroll down a little to where it says properties, and let's change a few things. So right now it's a continuous spray, and I want this to just be a one shot. And I'll preview, and it's going out to the side, so I'm gonna change the angle to 270, so it's going straight up. This is just for testing purposes. We will change the angle in the code. Let's change the size to 12. Now I'll preview that, bump that rate up quite a bit. I'm gonna go 120, and I'm going to flatten out this spray cone as well. Now let's go 160 on the spray cone. Okay, getting a little better. For the speed, I'm gonna drop that down to 80. All right, lighten up on this acceleration. It's at negative 150, I'm gonna go negative 50. Okay, uh, we're gonna increase the gravity so it starts falling back down. I'm gonna go 150, and I'm gonna drop the speed randomizer down to 500. Let's preview that. So that gives us more of a uh, splash look. We can do a couple of other things here. Uh, I'm gonna leave the time to one, one second, and fade to invisible. Let's come up here to our X randomizer and change that to 20. That gives us a little bit wider splash. And we can even change our Y randomizer. Let's go 10. So I like this. Uh, feel free to play around with all these things and, and see uh, what you like. See if it changes any. I'm gonna go with this. So let's hop over to our event sheet and let's go into our states group. And in our overlapping water event, once we're overlapping water, we start calling for things in sub events under it. So I'm gonna highlight the overlapping water event, press B on the keyboard, gives us a new blank sub event, and I'm going to create that splash particle system. So let's add an event to that, and we're gonna do it through our player. So go into player, and I'm gonna type in spawn another object, and that is going to be our splash particle. And for the layer, I actually want this to overlap our player when it splashes. So I'm going to create it on the player layer. That has to be in quotation marks. And the image point is gonna stay zero. It's gonna create at his feet as soon as he hits the water. So hit done. And I want it to splash upwards like we have it here. But to do that, we had to change the angle to 270. But if we don't change it in code, it's going to go by its default at angle zero because it's creating a brand new object. So let's add an action under that and go into our splash particle and set angle to 270. So when this creates the splash object on the player layer, anything that the game adds into a layer goes on top of whatever was created last. So our player is already on that layer. When we create the splash object, it will overlap our player. Now we do have one other issue and I'm going to test this out to show you what it is. See if you can figure out what we're missing from this code. I'm gonna show you, and that we'll have to destroy that too, but uh, when we jump into the water, if you uh, notice, we have a lot of splashing particle objects being created. That's because when it is overlapping the water object, it's always running this code every tick of the game, which in our case is 60 frames per second, 60 times every second, it is creating one of these particles. In this blank part of the sub event, let's double click and go into our system. And I'm gonna type in trigger once while true. So now, now it's just one time. Okay, in our project panel, in our layouts folder, I'm going to right click on it and we're going to add a layout. And I want to add an event sheet to it. Let's change the name of this layout to, you can name it whatever you want. I always call mine meta for metadata. I just haven't come up with any other name since I started doing that. So 
our meta layout is tied in to event sheet two. So I'm going to actually click on that and change this to say meta also. And I'm going to double click to open it. And actually we need to add something to our meta layout first. So over here on the meta layout, I am going to drag our splash particle onto the layout. And over on layout one, I'm going to click on that and delete it. So now it only exists on our meta layout and we need it to, so it will load into the game first and it will load all these properties in. Now, if we go to the meta event sheet, we can add an event, go into system and I'm gonna type in on start of layout and go into our actions, get our splash and uh, type in destroy. So now back to layout one, if we play, we don't get that splash starting off because that particle system's not already there. And it seems to still be working. All right. Let's go ahead and save if you haven't been. On our water layer, I'm going to double click on the layout and scroll down to particles. I'm going to insert another particle and just insert that wherever. I'm going to resize this to nine by nine. Zoom in. I'm going to grab a solid white color. I'm going to grab my line tool and draw me a fancy little uh, somewhat circular pattern here. I grab the pencil tool and just kind of fill those in right there. And then we can do a little reflection like that. And then I'm gonna drop the alpha down to 100, grab the paint bucket tool and fill that in. And actually that's not correct. I am going to change the alpha down to 20 and fill that in. Okay, that looks good. Let's exit out of that. With that selected, I'm going to rename this bubble. And here's our bubble. For testing purposes, I'm gonna change the angle to 270. And we're going to test this little bubble out. Let's scroll down to the properties of the particle. So right now, what we have is a big mess. Uh, I want this to be one shot. And the rate is going to be one for one bubble. And there it is. Uh, the spray cone, I don't want it to be so wide. I'm going to drop that down to 10 degrees. There we go. Now let's change the size down to the size of the particle, which was nine. There we go. Much better. Uh, a little fast, so let's knock that speed all the way down to 25. And now he's uh, going the other way because we have... Uh, some issues going on down here with our acceleration. I'm just going to put that at zero and put the speed randomizer at zero as well. And we can test that. He uh, fades out pretty quick. So I'm going to put the time at four seconds. Okay, not bad. But we can add another little effect here. Our size is at nine. If I put the grow rate at, let's say, minus five, once the bubble is created, it's going to shrink as it moves up. Okay, I'm happy with that. So with all those set, I'm going to do what we did with the splash. I'm just gonna delete that, go over to our meta tab and drag it out an instance of our bubble. And you see everything is still intact. Let's go into the meta event sheet, add an action, get our bubble and type in destroy. So now we don't have any unnecessary objects in the game. Back on our layout, we can, uh, let's go ahead and save just because we're thinking about it. And let's go grab our character, our player and double click to go into it. So I want the bubble to come from a location on our player. But I only want the bubble to be able to appear when our player is in the water. So these are all land animations. So we'll only need this location 
clarified when we're in our swim animation. Let's highlight our swim animation, come over here to our origin tool, and our origin is always at the bottom middle on all of these animations, so I need to make a new point. So in this image points panel, let's right click and add new image point, and you see it put right in the middle where his mouth is, and uh, not bad, I'm gonna move it over to right there, so that's a X of 10, Y of 12, and then I'm gonna right click on that image point and apply to whole animation. So now every frame of the swim animation has that new image point. Okay, exit out of that. Back on our event sheet. So as I was saying, I only want this to happen when we're in the water. So this is going to occur in this event block. When we're overlapping water, we're running these other blocks of code. Let's go ahead and make another block of code. So highlight all of this. B on the keyboard gives us another sub event. And I'm going to move this up to the very top of this sub event block and actually move the trigger once up. So our W check is on the bottom, our splash check is in the middle, and on top, we are going to create our bubble every so often. So if we double click to go into this sub event and go into system, and I want uh, every X seconds. We can set this to whatever we want. I'm gonna go every 1.5 seconds add an action to that and go into our player just like we did the splash. Let's go into the player and type in spawn another object. That will be our bubble. That layer, that will be on the, let's go with the player layer in between quotation marks. And our image point is going to be the one we just created. So image point zero is the origin point, starts at zero, and then image point one was the image point we just added. So let's add another action to that, get our bubble and set the angle to 270 because we want it to go straight up. Okay, let's play that. We get in the water, there's us a bubble, there's us another bubble, another one, and here's our problem. Our bubble gets out of the water and continues being a bubble going into the air. We are going to have to create a way to hide the bubble when it's outside of the water. And what we're going to do is create a mask and give it a blend mode that is only going to affect the bubble. And to do that, the bubble is going to have to be on its own layer. Otherwise, the mask that we create is going to affect whatever else is on that layer. So let's come over here to our layers panel, right click, let's add a layer and call it bubble and I'm gonna drag bubble underneath collisions, but above player. And if we go back into our event sheet, let's change this spawn bubble on layer to the bubble layer. Okay, so back on our layout. With our bubble layer selected, let's double click on the layout and add a sprite. Insert that, I'm gonna resize this to, uh, I'm just gonna do 16 by 16. Put our origin in the bottom left and grab our paint bucket tool and I'm going to get a solid black color and fill it in. My alpha is what we had it at last time so I'm going to bump that back up to full and we have us a black square. Okay, with that selected I'm gonna rename it mask and I'm going to move it down here and I'm going to make sure that it covers right where the water ends and I'm gonna raise it up enough to where the bubble doesn't go beyond the mask. The particle will be done or destroyed by the time it gets to this height. So just to test this out, I'm going to drag an instance of bubble out onto the layout and it's on our bubble layer and I'll put it in the water. Actually, I'll put it right where the mask is. Actually, I'm gonna put it in the water. There we go. And I'm going to click on our mask and right click, Z order, send to top of layer because I want it to be over our bubble. So with our mask selected over here in its properties, scroll down to blend mode under effects and we want to go destination out. Now, 
nothing has happened because our layer is not recognizing that blend. So if we click on our bubble layer, we get the bubble layer properties. And about halfway down, we have under appearance, we have force own texture. Click that box, make sure it's checked. And as soon as I did that, our mask object disappeared. But now when our bubble goes above that, it also disappears. So anything underneath this mask on this bubble layer will not appear there. I'm going to delete our bubble and then I'm going to lock this layer because I don't want to accidentally move it because I can't see it now. Okay, let's go test that. And well, we do have an issue. <laughs> that is because when it is being, the bubble is being created, it's being created on the bubble layer, but it's a new object. So it's going at the top of the layer. So it's on top of the mask. So in our event sheet, when we spawn the bubble, change the angle, now we need to move its Z order. So let's add an action, go to bubble, all the way down at the bottom, move to bottom. Let's try that. And there we go. It now no longer goes out of the water. All right, let's save that. We have covered quite a bit. We have one more effect to do, and that is the waves of the water. We will get to that in the next video and wrap this project up. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>